if Donald Trump, those of us that knew him and had to deal with him in New York. But what has surprised us is some of what has appeared to be the meek uh, kind of pushback on Donald Trump and, and people not really standing up to him. One of the things that I think distinguished you uh, is that you fought back, but uh, a lot of uh, your uh, fellow members of Congress on the Democratic side seem to want to go along to get along. Don't you think that this is a definitive moment that this January 6th committee has to demand if these people do not comply, they must uh, face the full weight of the law? The American people will not know that we have not lost our democracy unless people are not above the law. We can't have a bipartisan conversation with people saying, I'm not going to respect your subpoena. Uh, Reverend, you're absolutely right. Um, and, and on the select committee, we are of one mind. Uh, anyone who does not comply, um, we will refer for criminal prosecution. And uh, there needs to be accountability. Uh, it really uh, is essential for us to bring our democracy back from the brink, that we once again have a rule of law that applies equally to everyone. Um, but uh, one of the things that, that you know, terrifies me about uh, the upcoming midterms is we need to make sure that the party uh, in power believes in the rule of law. Uh, one of the stories I tell about uh, Kevin McCarthy is uh, sitting next to him on a plane, having a private conversation, uh, and then him going to the press and telling the press the exact opposite of our conversation. And when I confronted him on the House floor about this and said, Kevin, you know I said the exact opposite of what you told the press, his answer was to me, yeah, I know, Adam, but you know how it goes. Yeah. Um, we, we cannot have a leadership uh, in Congress uh, that, that has no commitment to the truth, um, that, that shares Donald Trump's uh, willingness to uh, falsify and lie about everything. Uh, and so this, is too, is what puts us at peril. I think of all the damage that Donald Trump did to our democracy, the most corrosive was this relentless attack on the truth. And Mika, as we both know, Congress. so many of those Republicans mm -hmm. will tell you they don't like Donald Trump, they wish he'd go away in private, and then they go on TV and fan the flames right. of his big lie. And the congressman's story about uh, about how that played out between him and uh, the speaker, it, uh, <laughs> uh, Kevin McCarthy at the time, uh, that is very Trumpy, and we've been through that type of experience as well early on. Yeah, you yeah, 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 sure, sure. And you know, Mika, your father, uh, you grew up uh, with your father when he lived in a very different Washington where Democrats and Republicans worked hard to understand each other, get along yeah. with each other. They would have dinner with each other, go to churches, synagogues, would, 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 would go out and do things, keep families together. And there was a sense of trust. Even when I was there in what, what's called the Gingrich years from 95 yeah. to 2001, things got rough. But if you gave somebody your word on the House floor, exactly. And you, you, if you had done something, it's so, it's so interesting, Congressman. <clears throat> it wasn't so long ago that I was there. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine a member of Congress having a private conversation with me mm -hmm. and then going around and mischaracterizing it in public. It wouldn't happen. And when I, you know, when I was in Congress, they considered me at the time. Things have changed a lot with what the Republican Party stands for now. They considered me to be a red hot, small government conservative. I'd go talk to Democrats all the time. We would disagree strongly on things. We would sit there, we'd have polite conversations. And then all my years there, I've never had happen to me what you just said happened to you, which I fear may be too commonplace. How in the world can you work with people when you can't even trust them to not mischaracterize private conversations? Well, you're absolutely right. Uh, and it was uh, just a shock to me. Um, I could imagine that someone would do such a thing and confronted him immediately on the House floor. But look, uh, people like Kevin McCarthy were made for this moment, uh, a moment when his party believes the truth isn't truth, that everyone is entitled to their own alternate facts. You say anything you will, you do anything you need to do to gain power and to try to keep it. Um, but uh, it's, it's what really has put our democracy on such edge. Because one of the painful lessons for me of, of the impeachment uh, trial was there's nothing wrong with the impeachment provision. There's nothing wrong with the drafting of our Constitution. Uh, we don't need to change the threshold for impeachment or anything like that. Um, 
But if those provisions aren't animated by people who believe in right and wrong, who tell the truth, uh, who try to uh, understand the spirit in which those provisions were written, then none of it works. Uh, and, uh, but at the same time, uh, again, we can all give into despair here, but we don't have that luxury. Uh, at the same time, right. uh, when I listened to Mitt Romney explain why he was voting to convict and was willing to suffer all the, the, the anger and fury of his party, uh, that, that he was a deeply religious man and he had children and grandchildren to answer to, I saw, you know, there are people of virtue uh, who justify the faith our founders had, that we don't have to be ruled by a despot, that we can, we can control our own destiny.